This is your city. This is your city wants to know. We want to know the background, the heartbeat of what makes up our beautiful cities. We dig into the backstories from the struggles to the successes of our local entrepreneurs, small business owners, artists, not for profit organizations, and the many, many people who make up the intricate tapestry of our communities. Real people, real stories, by you and for you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of This Is Your City. I'm so happy that you decided to join us today again, and you're not going to regret it because we have another amazing story. We love hearing stories. We love hearing about people's lives, and we have another one. Today, my guest is Chancellor K. Jackson, and he's a number one best-selling author. And his book is 14 Days in Beijing Prison. And we're going to get to that in a minute. How are you doing, Chancellor? Hey, man. Every day above ground is a great day. You know what I'm saying? Every day Towards above you, ground. Whether you want it to make it great or not. So it's like, hey, I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful. Can right. I complain? How you feeling? I'm, I'm great. That's, I like you. I said earlier, my feet are this side above, above the ground. We're all good. <laughs> yes, we can That's do a, that. That's a luxury. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Mr. Author, how's that feel? <laughs> How does that feel? Uh, you wouldn't. You couldn't have told me five years ago, two years ago. You know what I'm saying? That I'll be an author, or doing everything that I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? I, I identified as a football player for the longest. So once it was time for me to hang those cleats up and just really I had to redefine my, I had to find myself all over again. You know what I'm saying? And it's been a journey, but um, just uh, the course of action that took place after I graduated from college to where I am now is all part of the process. You know what I'm saying? Of just me being it where is I'm at today. So author is like, hey, it's, it's, it's worldly, it's profound. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's dope, for real, for real. You ever just wake up some mornings and go, wow, I'm a number one best-selling author. Like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Man. At first, it, I was like, damn, it was unbelievable. But just, I'm used to it now. And now it's just like, how can I keep this momentum going? How right. can we continue to build off of what we've been able to accomplish thus far? So, yeah. you know what I'm well, saying? Definitely ain't getting content. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, we got to keep going. We got to we got to go even harder now. If we got to go more. That's right, more. Do more, exactly. Well, before we get into the book and that you're a best-selling author, like just let's talk about you just a little bit. You just mentioned that you were all about football. You identified as a football player. So you played college football? Yes, I played uh, high school and collegiately. Um, I went to Setson University. It's a D1 school down in Florida, small private school. Um, where I played defensive back. So those that aren't familiar with football, I'm the person that guards the receiver. If you don't know who the receiver is, the receiver is the person that runs and catches the ball. So I, I guard him. <laughs> I played every position in the secondary unit. Free safety, strong safety, outside corner, slot corner, you name it. Uh, <laughs> DB to the fullest. <laughs> Who's your favorite NFL team? Oh, uh, Falcons. I'm a Falcons fan. I'm from Atlanta. Hey, rise up. <laughs> I'm a huge Seahawks fan. I don't know. I know it's kind of weird. It's the other side of the country. Hey, it's respectable. Y'all got a ring. Yeah. We, <laughs> we got one, so I can't really do too much talking. <laughs> so, so, you would, yeah. what happened, so I can't, can't do I can't do no talking. So it's, it's, <laughs> that's, funny. that's funny. So you you graduated college, got your you got out, yeah. I think I read somewhere that you were doing, um, is it marketing or media? Well, I got my degree in communication and media studies. Communication so degree. As far as um, initially the jobs that I was applying for were all corporate positions at marketing, sales, management, you know what I'm saying? That, that type, those type of fields. Yes. Um, it was clear that the uh, the universe was like, uh, no, this is not the fit for you, or, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 that's not, it's not the fit for you. 
And if something ain't for you, it, then it won't work. And clearly, it, and it wasn't working. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to take a different approach in my job searching. And mm -hmm. just sit back and re reevaluate myself and re reflect on my character, my personality, and just my skill set. And it's like, okay, yeah, you good with working with people, talking with people, dealing with people in some form or fashion, motivating others and encouraging others. So it's like, that's what you need to be doing. Or you need to be finding work that's geared towards that. So that's when I um, started looking for jobs around social work, just any and everything. And that's when I ended up coming across the opportunity to uh, teach abroad, teach English abroad in China. Okay, so that's that's how you ended up in Beijing. So you- I landed my first uh, job okay. after I graduated from college. Yeah. Right. So you wanted to reevaluate, regroup, find yourself a little bit, what you, what you got your degree in, you found, and this happens to a lot of people. This is- yeah. This happens yeah. to a lot of people. They get their degree and then they find out, yeah, not really. <laughs> so, and then so you thought, okay, I'm going to do something. And then so you found an opportunity to go teach. Yeah. China. And you took it. Oh, yeah. I mean, because you got to be my, and also just like my career ended November 2017. So as soon as, you know what I'm saying, the football ended for me, I started applying for jobs in November. I ain't land, I ain't get, I'm I'm applying, landing interviews, getting flown out, all different types of, all different types of shit, but did not land anything until like July. And the first job to tell me yes is on the other side of the world. Oh my gosh. Right I'm applying for all American positions, corporate positions. That's why I was like, okay, these people, I, it's the same process. I, I apply, I get the interview, do the interview, I don't get the job. Why? Oh, you like the experience. Da, 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 da. It hit me with the same BS excuses. So I'm like, okay, clearly this is not for me. So let me take a different approach. I took a different approach. Here I am on the other side of the world with it. <laughs> this is how that played out. So I just knew it was universal. Like, I was, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what I'm Were saying? you scared? So, not at all. Not at all. I'm a, uh, I'm a Sagittarius. So I'm very adventurous. I'm very spontaneous and optimistic. So it was nothing. It, it sounded soon. I'm I'm reading the job description. I'm like, but this shit sounds so much fun. Like some, like, it sounds <laughs> the ultimate adventure. I get to move to a whole different country and work. Oh yeah, that's that sounds lit. <laughs> that sounds yeah. lit for sure. Lit. I think I'm it, always an intrigue. Uh, China. I always wanted to go. Um, so it was like, hey man, it brought everything full circle. Yeah. Was your mom scared? Because I'm a parent. I think of that. Just like uh, me, my mom is a Sagittarius as well. <laughs> so <laughs> the apple don't fall far from the tree. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. She was like, oh, I got a reason to go now. I yeah. really got to go to China. So that's how she looked at it. That's so, and she actually did come out there twice. So <laughs> yeah, nice. twice. So, and we was lit. <laughs> it was that's lit. That's awesome. Yeah. So you're in Beijing, you're in China. You go and meet the people who you're supposed to be going to be working for. Yeah. And so we hear the book, the book is 14 days in Beijing prison, right? So that right now we already know, okay, he's got a job. Like, you know, the curiosity in us. Okay, mm -hmm. he goes across the world to get a job. He gets the job, but his book's about being in prison. But how, before you get to that, like you meet the people that you're gonna work for, how long before this? How long were you in Beijing before this happened? That's a great question. Um... I was in China. I was in Beijing for six months total. So okay. the book about my last 14 days. Oh. So prior to my last 14 days, China was was lit. I was, I was you know what I'm saying? We, uh, China was lit. Just being in a completely different culture. And honestly, it's a whole different world, essentially, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. um, but, man, just especially, and I never lived abroad. I, I lived in a different state. Of course, you know what I'm saying, but live in a whole different country. That was that was the first, and I was out there solo. So you know what I'm saying by myself. You know what I'm saying, and in, in addition to the people that like, because I, I came in with a recruiting class, like other people that the company recruited. So it was like twenty some of us. So all in all, we don't we, we all we know. You know what I'm saying. We all we got. You know what I'm saying. Ain't none of us got no family here. Ain't no, you know what I'm saying. So we 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 became family. You know what I'm saying for sure. But yeah, China was lit, man. Just exploring and uh everything you can think of from the simplest things here going to the grocery store going to the bank 
getting a haircut. You know what I'm saying? Like everything you can think of that it's an adventure and a half just because I'm in a completely different country doing it. I don't look like the people. I don't speak their language fluently. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 everything is a challenge and you have to have great patience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If, if you're not, you know what I'm saying? If that really doesn't drive you, then you know what I'm saying? I can see why you can you could be miserable. You know what I'm saying? But for me, it, it the people fun. there are very nice. I've heard. I've heard the people in China are very nice, very friendly and welcoming. Some of, some of the best customer service you will ever receive. Wow, nice. You, know, you folks bending over backwards. It's to the point you got to like, hey, can you like chill? I don't, you ain't got to do all that. Come on, family. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it for sure. But you can come on, man. You ain't got to do all that. I, yeah. I appreciate you, though. It's all love. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, they customer service out this world. <laughs> out this world. Uh-huh. For real, for real. And it's safe as well. China's the safest place you could be just because it's so strict of a country. Well, the don't even- how were you with that, with the with the censorship that China has? And like, how did that, how did you work with that? How did you work in that? Um, I just, I'm from Atlanta. So Atlanta is the city of finesse. It's like, you got to be a chameleon. You got to be able to adapt and adjust to every uh environment you in so it's like just having these natural traits in me already it wasn't number the thing going to someplace drastically different all i gotta do is I, i'm gonna sit back and i'm evaluative i'm yeah. I'm, I'm sit there and analyze everything see feel the energy feel the, vi- uh, the vibrations and the frequencies the you know, the routines and then okay now i can know how to work my one with everything. I know how to do go about this, go about that, do this, do that. You know so all in all just it, it took time for sure. It took me by the time me like fully, fully like settled in, it took me about two months. Yeah. Two months. I, I'm just I'm just like you though. I'm I love to travel. I've been blessed to be many places and I do the same thing. You just you have to realize that you're not home. And so just sit back and observe and then take cues from the the locals on how to, (laughs) right? I love that. So you were there for six months in all. So the the book was the last 14 days approximately of your time there. What, when you left United States, what was your time frame? Did you think, or did you not have one? Like you were just going to be there forever now? Or My contract was supposed to be a year. So I entered China on October 10th, 2018. And my contract will end October 10th, 2019. And by then, way before my contract ended, I, you know what I'm saying, I would have had the evaluations with my bosses and stuff, you know what I'm saying, to see if it's something that I want to continue to do or, you know what I'm saying, take my talents elsewhere. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah I plan on doing my year. And I'm like, after that year, I should have enough underneath my belt to figure out what's going to be my next move. For right. Sure. So but, you were teaching. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was teaching uh, children as young as three years old all the way up to 14. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it was dope. The kids the kids made it worthwhile as well. You know what I'm saying? Just connecting with young spirits in general. Yeah. Um, kids are very impressionable. So, and they're just sponges. They soak up everything. So it's just like just being able to instill and plant seeds into, you know what I'm saying, those young spirits is like... It's an honor. In essence. And I, in it's essence, it's, honor, it's honorable just because like I, I, I have a say so, or I can play a part in the development of this this young spirit who will grow up to be. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Thank you for doing that because it is an honorable position teaching young kids. Yeah. Teach. It's beautiful. So you're there eight. six months. Well, almost six months in. Yeah. Now I'm, we get to the good stuff. Okay. Now <laughs> you know you. <laughs> I know you have a book and so you don't want to reveal too much, but you got to give us some meat because, you know, we want to have your, we need to have your name on our lips so that we can like, you know, give <laughs> us. Uh, I'll walk out through the, um, like the first two chapters, essentially, just because I have a free version available on Amazon and it's first, and it's the first three chapters of the book. So it's already for free. So I'm, I'll okay. walk out first, you know what I'm saying? I'll walk out through the first little section of it, but, um, it's April 4th, 2019. Um, it's a Thursday, and it's a, it's my day off, one of my days off. So um, I'm finna get ready to go to this event. Um, this event, because the company I work for, they host team builders every month. So 
it was a team building event and we was going to be, uh, you know, the Chinese fans, we was going to be decorating and creating, customizing our own. Okay. Um, I'm like, oh, that just sound dope. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, for sure. And um, so I'm going to get ready to go to that event. I go through my u- typical morning u- routines and preparations. And the event started at like noonish, one o'clock. So, of course, you know what I'm saying, before I actually, because it, it, it's going to be a fun event. You know what I'm saying? This is not nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not work related. It ain't nothing serious. So we're going to have fun. So I'm going to pregame before I slide. And for those that don't know what pregaming is, it's pretty much like when you're getting ready to go out to the club or to a bar or to a party with your friends. But before y'all go to the actual function, hey, let's turn up at the crib real quick. You know what I'm saying? Then we're going to go. You know what I'm saying? So that I was just pregame before I slid. So I'm sitting down in my living room. I'm uh, sipping some some wine, sipping a wine cooler and uh, chiefing some cannabis at my little silver pipe. And I get crossfaded. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm good. Finish getting dressed, getting everything I got, getting all my stuff to, together, make sure I got everything I need before I leave. Phone, wallet, keys, check, mask. Okay, I'm good. I'm about ready to go. And then I hear a knock the door. I'm like, okay, guess I ain't nothing familiar. But you know what I'm saying? I ain't expecting nobody. So I'm, I'm curious to see who, who, who knocking on the door. So I look through the people, and it's uh, three officers from the Beijing police on the other side of the door. <laughs> I'm oh. like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit so <clears throat> i scrambled to put everything up and um open the door and they they walk in and the first officer there's three of them and they standing in like a triangle like this here so the first officer he you know what i'm saying he's talking to me i'm not fluent in mandarin and he's speaking to me as if i am so of course he's talking i'm just looking at him dumbfounded like he <laughs> realized that quickly so he you know what i'm saying he pulls out his phone he goes to his translator app, he speaks into it, and it shows me the translation on his phone, and it says, are you on drugs? Instinctively, I know it's time to lie. No. Well, <laughs> what are you like? I'm like, hell no. Nah. Like, bro, you tripping? Like, nah, bro. Nah. Passport? You need to see my passport, huh? It's it what you're here for, but you need to check my passport, because I don't know what you what you talking about. So he's speaking to the app again, and show me the translation the second time, and it says, are there any drugs in the house? family where are you getting this information like why are you you didn't even say hello <laughs> like you did this the first thing I was like nah bro you tripping but let me go get my passport bro because it, it's obviously some confusion going on even though i'm guilty but i just got i'm from atlanta i gotta work my one i gotta finesse so <laughs> i gotta finesse so i'm like all right let me go get my passport that's clearly what y'all need to see so i go get my passport my visa my apartment contract i got all my documents they needed walking back to the living room slapping on the table i'm like all right bro this is what you need right here, bro. I don't know what you're talking about, but this is what you need to look over right here. So he's sitting there looking over the uh, my documents and the other two officers, they're just, you know what I'm saying? They got they walking with their hands behind their back, just casually scanning the apartment gently. You know what I'm saying? They ain't really going through nothing for real, but they got wondering eyes for sure. So I'm like, I'm just sitting there and they told me, well, I'm standing there and they told me to sit down at the, uh, my dining room table. So I sit down at the table. And like a few minutes within me sitting down, I hear footsteps coming from down the hall because the door, front door is still open. So I hear footsteps coming from down the hall, look. And it's another officer coming to the apartment. He got something in his hand. I really don't think nothing of it because I'm just like, okay, how? I'm just trying to think what's going to be my next move. How I'm going, you know what I'm saying? How is this shit going to play out? What I'm going to say? Like, that's all I'm thinking about. And I'm, and I'm still high. I'm still, you know what I'm saying? So I'm fading, I'm panicking. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, it's the heat of the moment, fog of war. And so the other officer enters the apartment and he hands the item to the officer I was originally speaking to. And that officer t- pretty much he tells me without like ge- he tells me through gesturing, he said, Hey, you gotta pee in the cup. And it was a drug test right there on the spot. And so as he said that, I was like, it's over with. <laughs> it's over with. I'm like, damn boy, I just got there smoking proud of y'all not gonna lie though, but it's over with. So do the drug test. Fail it, of course. <laughs> and by this time, like it's like six officers in my apartment now. Um, one of them speaks English, fluent. So he's, you know what I'm saying, interrogating me about, you know what I'm saying, where I get the weed from, you know what I'm saying, when the last time I smoked, who, you know what I'm saying, who was I with? And I'm, mind you, I'm still faded, you know what I'm saying, I'm still high. So I'm coming up with just different answers every time, you know what I'm saying, just, I'm just, man, shooting the shit with him, honestly. And he pretty much realized that I wasn't going to give him any valuable information. So 
And that's when he was like, all right, he all in all, he was like, hey, but we know you capping, we know you lying. You know what I'm saying? Your drug test proves that you know what I'm saying you smoked this recent as a week ago. You know what I'm saying? So all this shit that you're telling us, we know it's not the truth. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right. At this point, I'm like, okay, I'm caught ran handed. All in all, I caught ran handed. Um, so they ended up arresting me. Back up. Um, yeah, so yeah, back let me backtrack. So as he's investigating me, like he'll ask a question, I'll answer it, and then the second, you know what I'm saying? Then he'll ask, are there any drugs in the house? I, no. Oh, why you keep asking? So he asked something else. I answer that. Are you sure there are any drugs in the house? Bruh, no. Like he kept picking, like he kept piggybacking to, are there any drugs in the house? And I'm steady lying, I'm steady lying. And then he was like, are you sure there are any drugs in the house in like a bag or a container or something? And as soon as he said those specific things, I knew it was over because that's exactly I, like when I put everything up, I put the rest of the weed I had into my shea butter container. And I put the shea butter container inside my backpack. So as soon as he said in like a bag or container, I'm like, uh, it's over with. <laughs> it's over with. I'm like, it's been, it's really been over with, to be honest, regardless if they would, you know what I'm saying, if I had the flower on me or not, the fact that I failed the drug test, I was going to get arrested regardless. So I was asked out anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like, all right, it's over with. So I'm like, at this point, all right, I'm caught red handed. I got to hold myself accountable. All right, bet. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got it <laughs> for sure. Just, all right, sure. I get up and I walk to my room to work. That's why I hid the, uh, the rest of the flower. And lo and behold, all my sh- everything is on the bed. Like these folks been found it. They just wanted to, they was just fucking with me to see if I was going to give them any information. So once they realized I wasn't, they was like, okay, just we're going to cut the bullshit. We know, you know what I'm saying? We know what's going on. So I'm like, all right, boom. So, you know what I'm saying? They confiscate everything. And and it was so crazy because, like, they so they were so cool. They were still so cool. It's like, all right, uh, you need to finish getting dressed? You need to do it, you know what I'm saying, do anything else before we leave? I'm like, no. Nah. Ironically, I was going to leave prior to y'all showing up. So I'm ready to go, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm ready to go. So he was like, told, he told me to turn around. He pulled out the handcuffs. I'm like, damn, bro, you got to, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, you got to put the handcuffs on me. I'm like, it's peaceful, bro. Like, I ain't finna be on no edge, but hey, let me be compliant. Turn around, put the handcuffs on me. And they walked me down and throw me into the van. So now it's just me and two other officers. The officer that I was speaking, that I was speaking to, he's gone. I don't know where he's at. So that's where communication ends. So from this point moving forward to the rest of the story, I have no clue what is going to happen to me. I'm just going along for the ride. <laughs> Were you scared at this point? No, 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 no. I'm not scared because I'm I got great faith and I'm I'm like, I know I'm gonna be good. I know for a fact I'm gonna be good. Now, how is this going to play out? I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. I don't know what the hell this is. I'm just, I'm really just blown away. I'm like, bro, I would never guess my first time ever getting arrested. It's it's on the other side of the world. Like, this is my first time ever getting in trouble, trouble. Like, man, what? I'm like, man, you can't make this up. (laughs) I said, you can't make this up. So, and I guess it's obviously, I know here, I don't know about for you in Atlanta, but here where I live, marijuana is legal. So, apparently, not not over there. They they equate marijuana with meth and crack and cocaine. They they put all that's all the same category in them to their eyes. Like it's, you, <laughs> but so we ride to first precinct, which is it's not that far from my apartment. So the ride is very short, like five minutes. So and I the first precinct is like the typical precincts that you see on tv and media like when they bring the new arrest in they sit them down in chairs you got officers on desk duty it's literally that but the chinese version yeah. literally it's, it's they're dead ass so get back in the van we are about 30 minutes later we arrive at another precinct this one's a lot bi- uh, a lot bigger and it has holding cells so they have me change um and put me in the holding cell with i'm in there with probably like eight to ten other inmates they all chinese of course um, so I'm just sitting there, just reflecting and replaying, recapping everything. And then they call me to come get me from the holding cell and take me downstairs to the bottom of the precinct to conduct my interrogation. They walk me into this room and this, uh, it has, it, the room is furnished with this metal chair that looks like an electric chair. <laughs> and it has, yeah, I'll shoot you not. <laughs> 
across from the electric chair looking chair <laughs> is a table and two regular chairs for the officers to sit at to conduct the interrogation. And on the tripod is a camera mounted high capturing all the furniture. You know what I'm saying? So just, you got the lecture chair, you know, a place for the officers to sit at, and then, you know what I'm saying, they got the camera just to document uh, the interrogation. So they walk me to the, the metal chair and open it. And like, they like gesturing for me to sit down. I'm looking at them crazy like, y'all really want me to sit my ass down? And they like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so serious, like, yeah. So I sit my ass down. <laughs> I sit my ass down. They lock, it locks your ankles, your thighs, your hips, your chest, and your arms. So I'm sitting, let me, let me adjust this. So I'm sitting in the, in, the, in the chair just like this here, locked up. Wow. I don't think I can really move with my head. You know what I'm saying? And they just, they conduct an interrogation like that. Um, so the officer come in, he introduces himself. He can speak English, of course. You know what I'm saying? Introduces himself. And now they just pretty much just questioning me about where I get the weed from and all this, that, and the other. And by this time, I've had plenty of time to come up with a solid story to give them. So I give them the story. Um, and after you know what I'm saying, they trans they was transcribing it as it was happening. So they had somebody typing it up as we can do doing the interrogation. So after we finish, they print it off and have me look over it to see it. And now it's Mind you, a lot of this shit is Mandarin, so I can't, <laughs> I can't even read what they, you know what I'm saying. So I just looked over briefly. I'm like, they look good enough. So I sign it. I bet fingerprint. I bet, and they release me from the chair. So I right, get up at the chair, take me back upstairs, uh, get my mug shot, get my whole hand printed to the system, throw me back into the holding cell. And I, so I'm back in the holding cell. I'm handcuffed, sitting down. And I'm just recapping everything, just reflecting everything. I mean, it's just deep, deep, deep thought. And just coming up with just different scenarios. Like, man, I could have did this better. I could have did that. I could have, all in all, I'm like, well, all in all, regardless of all these different scenarios and things I could have did, things I could have said, the result would have still been the same because I failed the drug test. Regardless, you failed a drug test, you ain't going to lock you up regardless. So I'm like, I was damned, I was damned regardless. So it's just like, Hell, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I just gotta hold myself accountable. Accountability, yeah. I hold myself accountable. Um, yeah. So I'm just sitting there, I look up, it's completely dark. Um, and the next thing I know, they come and get me from the holding cell. All right, we walk back to the lobby, they bring me my clothes and tell me to get dressed. So I'm like, oh shit, all right, man, I'm finna. I'm like, it must have worked. I'm like, my plan worked, well, the story worked. I'm like, okay, they finna let me go, bet. So I'm getting dressed. Get back dressed, and I'm just waiting for the uh, to follow orders. And they told me to come follow them into this door that's behind the front desk. So I walk through the door, and now I'm in the hallway. And I look at the end; it's a room at the end of the hallway. It's small and it's crowded with hella officers, a bunch of officers. So we walk into the to the room. I get in and realize, okay, this is the evidence room. It's hella evidence everywhere from just different cases and all. You know what I'm saying? And on the table is the, the flour that they confiscated from me, uh, the shea butter that I had the flour in, and um, a DVD next to the rest of the evidence. So I'm like, okay, they they done made a physical copy of the arrest from the officer's body camera. And I'm like, damn, I really want to watch that shit just because I would just, I just, I'm like, that should be so cool to watch. Yeah. But they take my flour. And they weigh it up. I had 1.4 grams. And for those that don't know what 1.4 grams, it is not a lot at all. <laughs> it's, it's not a lot at all. So, yeah, all right, got you know what I'm saying. Scale it up to put everything on paper. Had me sign it and thumbprint it. All right, they collect everything, and we get back into the van. Now, nobody has explained anything to me. I don't know what's finna, finna happen. I, I definitely ain't finna ask no questions. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm only speaking unless directly spoken to. So, yeah. But I'm just like, okay, maybe they finna let me go. They finna let me go now. So, and that's the end of chapter one. So now we're entering chapter two. <laughs> chapter one, that's day one. Now we enter day two. Because we get in the van and you know what I'm saying? He cranked the car up and the radio come on. I look at the time. It's like one something in the morning. So it's the whole next day, technically. So this is day two we started on. I, I got arrested at like 11 something that morning. 
So here it is, one o'clock, one thirty, one forty. So I'm like, I've been in these folks' custody for fourteen hours, handcuffed, vast majority of the time. Ain't yeah. ate nothing, ain't drunk nothing, nothing. I'm just ready. I'm just hoping finna let me go. You know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about nothing else. So we riding. We on the interstate. Now I'd have been in China for a good amount of time up until this point. So I, I pretty much didn't. I, I can move around the city on my own. Like I. It, 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 so I'm looking at the signs. I'm like, bro, I don't think we getting anywhere close to where I stay. <laughs> where I stay. Well, I'm like, shit. We fin- I'm finna find out soon. So, about 40 minutes uh, into the ride, we arrive at this facility with tall walls and barbed wire. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> I see what's going on. Okay, for sure, this shit is not over with. <laughs> it's not over with. So. Going to the uh the jail, take me to the nurse's office to conduct, you know what I'm saying, the blood test and blood pressure and all, you know what I'm saying, all you know what I'm saying, the typical stuff. And then after that, they take me to this room to um change clothes, carry my uniform. The uniform comprises uh it's a jacket, like and the best way I can describe this jacket as far as the texture and the, and the quality in which it's made, is like a dickies jacket. So I'm talking about the same, like the same exact feel and everything. So, but the top half of it is yellow, front and back. Top half is yellow, bottom half is blue. And here on your left chest plate in red Chinese characters, it says Beijing Jail Number Six, and the same thing on the back. So the jacket, and the jacket is pretty hard. Like you would, you would probably swag that shit. And like you know what I'm saying for real, for real. Like yeah, but I can get, I can get fresh with this for real. Like I can wear this out to the club or something. But <laughs> I put the jacket on. And they give me some blue sweatpants and some blue sandals. And they give me one bowl, one plastic bowl, and one plastic spoon. So after, you know what I'm saying, they have me throw the rest of my clothes into a, a luggage bag and put the luggage, put my stuff in, in the storage unit, um, what the other inmates' stuff is. So I right, follow the officer upstairs, and we get to cell 209. And mind you, it's like four o'clock in the morning at this point. So he opens the cell door and immediately I see two inmates, they both Chinese, standing up against the wall, watching the rest of the inmates sleep. <clears throat> the inmates sleep, are, the inmates that are asleep, is, um, they sleeping on wooden, wooden beds. So these are pretty much wooden planks with cubbies up underneath them. So they sleeping on wood and it's only nine of those wooden beds and i'm counting it's with me included it's 15 of us in this cell oh my gosh but two, two people are standing watch so that means it's 13 people that are asleep so it's still 13 people on nine beds and folks like how does that work well like what's that you know what i'm saying how does that even work so, and i equated it to think back to when you ever had a slumber party back in the day or a sleepover with your your friends or your cousins or Oh, you played travel ball. You know what I'm saying? It's something, and it was yeah. a limited amount of space to sleep. So, you know what I'm saying? Y'all all, so imagine that, but with random grown men. <laughs> so he opened the cell door. That's all I'm seeing. I'm just like, oh, hell no. Nah. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, no. Nah. I walk in. Immediately to the left is the bathroom. It's his own separate room, but the walls are made of glass, so you can see straight into it. It's a sink, of course. Um, the toilet is a, is a squat toilet, so pretty much a hole in the ground that you got to squat over. And yeah. uh, the showers are pretty much a water hose with a shower head tied to it. Um, the cell is a big rectangle. It's, it's big to house 15 people, but that's just pretty, like, it ain't like we got ever around, you know what I'm saying? We can just kick up, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, it ain't like that, you know what I'm saying? But it's big enough to house 15 people. Um, it's wow. a TV mounted above the cell. So if I'm standing in the cell door, the TV's right above my head. You know what I'm saying? Mounted to the wall. Um, it's a camera high in the corner of the room capturing the entire room. Um, and like I said, we have a window um, but it's gated and stuff, but we can open it to get a lot of air to blow into the cell and stuff. But yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. So I approached the slumber party <laughs> and, and the, one of the inmates that was standing and taking watch. Well, one, I'm like, why are these folks sitting here watching these people sleep? That's the first thing that pro- crossed my mind. But I'm like, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so I was at the slumber party trying to find a, a spot where I can, you know what I'm saying, lay down. 
And one of the inmates that was taking watch, he, you know what I'm saying, he wakes up to the inmates, tell them to make room for me. And they made room for me. So, I, you know what I'm saying, he's like, hey, put your bowl up underneath the, the, in the cubby. So I put my bowl in the cubby. And I just lay down and I'm just staring at the bright, it's a bright ass light at the, you know what I'm saying, on the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? So despite it being nighttime, their light don't come off. So I'm just sitting there laying on my mm. back next to being cradled by, you know what I'm saying, these <laughs> other bodies. I'm just looking up at the light, like, just like, and that's it. That's when they really sunk in, like, damn, bro. Like, all right, yeah, you in here for real. Like, this shit is real. Like, <laughs> I don't have no clue what the fuck is going to happen. Like, people don't know where I'm at. Like, man. Yeah, I'm yeah like, you you haven't even had a phone call. Like, they, does that even exist there? Like, they don't even allow that? Yeah. Nobody knows where you are. So, wow. I'm like, exactly. So, I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. I know I'm gonna be good, but this shit ain't looking too good right about now. <laughs> but it's like, you know what I'm saying? I just did did a little prayer and you know what I'm saying? I was like, just get some rest that you, you know what I'm saying, get some rest, man. Well, you know what I'm saying, just take it step by step, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause at this point, yeah, it's out, everything's out of your control. So ain't no point in stressing. You know what I'm saying? So I go to sleep. I was only sleep for like what hours and change. Cause like I said, it was like four something. When I got to inside the cell and we got to get up at 630 every day. You know what I'm saying? So I, I wouldn't even sleep that long. But yet, I'm so stressed out. I wouldn't even worry about not sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Not sleeping. I wouldn't even worry about no food, nothing. Um, so, and that's the end. You know, we, we still in chapter two. This is, damn, we still in chapters. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this story is, and it's a lot more detail within the book. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's a lot that I left out. But um, all in all. Of course, the next day comes. I meet with the warden of the jail. Uh, they they took all the new inmates. They took us down to meet the warden to sign our sentence contracts. So I'm in the in the office with the warden, and it pretty much has me sit down, gives me the contract. All of this shit's in Mandarin, so I can't read it. He doesn't explain nothing to me, <laughs> and I'm not sitting there asking no questions either. So uh, you just want me to sign it and th- pretty much uh, sign the thumbprint. That's all y'all been telling me to do. That's really the only thing I've been communicating, to sign the thumbprint. So sign, thumbprint, game the thing. And I went back out into the uh, to the uh, hallway waiting for the rest of the inmates to get done. Go back to the cell. I still have no clue what the hell just happened. I don't know what's going to come. I'm just like, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? I'm back in the cell. Of course, everybody, you know what I'm saying? We all awake. Now, you know what I'm saying, all the inmates want to talk to me because, you know what I'm saying, I'm a new face. One, I'm a new face and I'm a foreigner and yeah. I'm a man. Of color. And at that point in time, I had locks. So, of course, this is probably their first time ever seeing anything like that. So they're just intrigued. They want to know. But, all these, I, mind you, these are all Chinese men. None of them speak English. I don't really speak Mandarin like that. So... We, you know what I'm saying, they want to talk to me, we, we're trying to converse, but it's like, man, the language barrier is so, man, it's so bad, it's just like, hey, hey, we ain't getting nowhere, <laughs> we're not getting nowhere, and then I'm still just reflecting and just, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I ain't even in the mood to talk at this point, just because I'm like, but yeah, so I was locked up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 15 people to one cell, now I wouldn't bed for 14 days straight. Oh, wow, no. that's incredible. <laughs> and it's all still chapter t- like i'm still in chapter two you know what i'm saying i ain't even get to like you know what i'm saying that's what it's like and, and it, i was the only english speaking only foreigner in the in, in uh in the cell for the first three days on the yeah. third day um vast majority of, like 12 of the inmates got released so it only left three of us, me and two other Chinese dudes. One was about in his 40s. The other one was a young cat. He was like under 21. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, what they finna do with us? I know they're not finna leave us in this whole cell by ourselves. And like, as I'm thinking that, they come in and call us to, to come uh, to leave. So I'm like, okay, we finna get ready to go. All right, bet, bet. You know what I'm saying? So we're walking down the hallway. We get to the, like two cells down, cell 207. He started unlocking the door. I'm like, fuck <laughs> i'm like damn but i'm thinking we finna get ready to go i'm like i do not feel like having to get used to new it's new cellmates and i don't feel like doing that whole process again but fuck it i ain't got no choice you know what i'm saying it is what it is so he unlocks the door this cell has the same exact setup as the one before but the only addition this cell had a lot more supplies than the last one like the last one, all i had was one bowl and one spoon 
that's it. This one, they got stools to sit on. It's art all on the walls, snacks and stuff. I'm like, whoa, it's, it's a whole different vibe in here. Like, damn, it's a party. <laughs> like, what's going on in here? And the first person I see is this big dude. Like, I'm thinking he's European because he, you know what I'm saying, he has... What, you know what I'm saying? Pale skin. So I'm thinking he's European. Big dude. I'm talking about 6'3", 6'4", 250 pounds. And mind you, we're not allowed to lie down during the day. Only time we can lie down is time for nap or it's time to go to bed. Aside that, we either just got to sit up straight, sit down, or, you know what I'm saying, we standing up. So first person I see when I walk into this new cell is big European dude. He got scabs all on his face as if he was just been in a fight recently. He lay, I'm talking about laying down cozy on his back watching TV. Only person. And I'm just like, I look at him, and he look at me. I just put my head down. I ain't, I ain't even keep eye contact <laughs> long. I, just, <laughs> I said, oh, hell no. Well, they supposed to move into this cell. I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm just, I'm just walking, got my head down still, and I just hear, hey, man. And I look up. And <laughs> cause I'm just so I'm just so in disbelief that I just heard. Ang I'm like, what the yeah. hell? I just I speak English? Somebody just greeted me. Look up, it's a Chinese American from California. Um, so of course I'm just so happy to be talking to somebody. So now we and this is chapter four, early into chapter four that we in. And this is when the shift within the whole story happens. Cause it's like first three days, nobody to talked to, no communication, don't know what's going on, got hella questions, can't get them answered. And so it's, it, it, it's just a fucked up situation all in all. Day four, chapter four, moving to a new cell. Here I am, I find an English speaker. So, of course, that's when the dots start to connect. All the questions that I had before, it's just I ha I can get answers to now, the best yeah. that I can. You know what I'm saying? So, sitting there talking to him, and then as I'm talking to him, dude next to me, he sticks his hand out, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Victor. I'm like, oh, sh what are you? It, okay, it's more than one in here. Oh, <laughs> he's uh, Brazilian from Brazil. You know what I'm saying? Both of them speak English, and both of uh, the Chinese American. He's fluent in, in in Mandarin. I'm talking about fluent. He's a whole. He's literally the core the core of our cell, just because he can communicate with both parties. Yeah. The Brazilian, of course, he speaks English. He's fluent in English. And he can speak Mandarin very well. Like, he can hold conversations. I can't do neither. <laughs> so it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it was just, man, and that's when it, it, it was just, it was a whole shift within the paradigm. Like, yeah. okay, I can talk to folks now. I can get better understanding how this process works, what's next to come, and how how it will potentially play out for me. But it's all not, I still have no clue what's going on, how long I'm going to be here. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just got to, use the resources that I do have to try to figure out what may happen, you know what I'm saying, how I may end up getting out of this situation. But, uh, you know what I'm saying, after that, you know what I'm saying, of course, it's a lot more harmonious and we're just learning each other's backgrounds and, you know what I'm saying, just learning about each other, just like, because it's what are the odds that I meet you two gentlemen in a Beijing penitentiary, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, at all places, I'll run into y'all here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely just intrigued to know y'all's story, bro. Like, what's it, you understand? Of course, what took place for y'all to end up in here, but what, like, how did y'all, what's y'all journey, bro? What's y'all story, bro? Like, how y'all even in China? How many, how many people do you know that lived in China? You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? So it's like the fact that we all here right now is, man, it's crazy. It's crazy for sure, for sure. But mm -hmm. yeah, so um, and still, and that's we still probably yeah we still halfway through, not even halfway through chapter four. Like it's still probably like the first. So much. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it's a long story for sure, for sure. But um. But it's, it's something <laughs> you need to get the book to figure to hear what happened. People need yeah. to get the book, sure. and so for my listeners. You know, it's on Amazon, right? Yeah. Yes. It's on Amazon. You can go, you can get the Kindle version, you can get the book version. You know, I'm a person who likes to have like the book in my hand. Although I like audio, I like to have the book. <laughs> I just tell everybody, we got to finish the story. So get the book. We got to find out what happened. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, you know, obviously you got out, but Beijing prison, people have this 
thing in their mind, like, oh my gosh, you know, you only see on TV, like how you were treated or what was going on. So get the book so we can find out what happens. Honestly. But I want to ask a question. There'll be like day three, let's say. Mm-hmm. Okay. You weren't too scared. You were just, you know, answering questions, you know, there had to be a moment though, even like, even though if you pushed it out, say, no, nope, no, nope, we're not having any of those thoughts. There had to be a moment where you were like, what the heck? Like, I'm in a foreign country, drug related charges. There had to be a something saying, nobody knows where I am. I definitely, I help, like I said, I held myself accountable. And I just, that's just a, a general term that I can use, but I'm definitely like, I'm, I'm, I'm holding myself. Like I'm on, I play football. So it's, you can understand, you, you can get an idea of the amount of how the type of criticism you can yeah. receive one football so of course i'm giving myself that same intense that same level of critiques like you know what i'm saying it's like i'm drilling myself but it's like at the end of the day it's it's a learning curve so and you know what i'm saying i ain't no telling how long i'm gonna be in here so am i gonna continue to just dwell in negativity you know what i'm saying nah why why do that <laughs> you know what i'm saying it is what it is it's where we at with it okay you know what i'm saying I'm thinking of solutions. Ain't no point of us sitting here talking about the problem like a broken record. You know what I'm saying? That ain't going to get us nowhere. Okay, what, what's going to be the possible solutions? How can we, you know what I'm saying? How can we move on and get out of this situation and definitely take what we need to take away from this experience for the yeah. betterment of ourselves? So um, day three, yeah, that's, and day three, chapter three, the title of that chapter is called War With My Reflections. Because I'm at, like, I am at, like literally the whole chapter, I'm just reflecting and just, <laughs> I'm just going at it just with my, because I ain't got, I can't talk to nobody. They got the TV on, but we in China, so I can't, I don't know what the hell these folks talking about on the TV. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, wow. So I definitely can't even follow that. I'm just, I'm in my head. Yeah, everybody in the front of the cell watching TV, I'm in the back, just, you know what I'm saying? Just like, just, man, I'm just thinking, 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 thinking. I'm already a, 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 a big thinker in general. I wouldn't say I overthink, but I definitely analyze everything and critique everything. So it's just like I'm doing that ten times fold now that I'm in this predicament. And, and it's crazy. Like um, the first three days, like once I'm well, what, chapter two and three, like once I'm actually in the jail, jail. Um, of course, I'm the only foreigner, only English speaker, and I can't talk to the rest of cellmates. It was one cellmate. He was a Chinese dude that I was able to communicate with. And it wasn't like he knew any English. He didn't know no English. But yet I was still able to communicate with this man. It was the only person in cell that I could do this with. And he was, I mentioned him like early in, you know what I'm saying, early into chapter two. Okay, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's breakfast. They're bringing breakfast by the cell. The breakfast, they got porridge and they got these uh, rolls, bread rolls, and they got like this, this, I don't know what what it is. It looks like a vegetable. It looked like uncooked hash browns to me, but I don't know what it is. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? They bring the breakfast to the cell, all the inmates getting their breakfast and stuff. So I'm just sitting back and watching first and foremost, see how the process works before I just get up and, you know what I'm saying? All right, everybody get their food. I see what everybody did. So now I'm following suit. So I point to the little, the hash browns looking down. I was like, what is this? He's like, oh, it's, uh, it's vegetables. I'm like, bet. Let me get some of that, and I'll take this roll. I don't want the porridge. Y'all got that. I'm straight on that. So I'm just standing up, you know what I'm saying, just eat my little bread roll, and the uh, vegetable is salty as hell, but it, it's good, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sitting there, just, I'm standing, just eating. And the one cellmate, I was, he, you know what I'm saying, he patted the seat next to because the space next to him, he patted it, like, sit down, bro. So all right, man, so I sit down. And you know what I'm saying? He showed like he, like he made a breakfast sandwich. Like he opened his bread roll and put his salty vegetable. He's like, he showed me his like like this here. I'm like, oh, we can't talk at all. But, I, but so I do the same thing. And it, it started off as that, you know what I'm saying? And then as just time progressed, I learned that this man is two, three years older than me. He has two kids. He's married. <laughs> I know what he does for a living. What he can't wait to do when he gets out of jail. What he wants to show me. Like, he is communicating all of this to me. <laughs> and we can't even verbally speak with one another. That's awesome. And on the third day, he was one of those inmates that got released. And that was mm-hmm. my last time seeing him, ever talking to him. You know what I'm saying? That was it. So I definitely was like, bro, that, me and him, like, that, it was too universal. Maybe he, maybe someday you'll get to see him again. 
I, I said that, and I say this, and I said I said, bro, we would cross paths again, some crazy shit, bro. I know for a fact, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, <laughs> I remember, his, I remember exactly what he looked like. So that would be, that would be dope. No cap, no cap. That's that would awesome. Be awesome. But yeah, that's, I, you know what I'm saying. So it's, it's I saw dope. something. I wanna. I know we can't talk about it because it's like a part two or part three or something. But I saw it, so you shared it. So, but there was also a point. I don't know. Is there a two, book two coming out? It is. <laughs> it is? Okay. It is. <laughs> so cause I'm thinking, when I saw this, I'm like, oh, this must mean that there's a, another book coming out. Mm -hmm. Because it was just a small little snippet that I was like, what? What the heck's happening here? You're in an elevator. And you just look up and you lock eyes with this guy and he's a friend. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Continue. Continue. <laughs> Because I'm thinking, you know, for, for the sake of time, I want people to like, you know, there's a book two coming. So obviously there's some more interesting stuff. Well, you didn't even get into the, well, you only got into a few chapters with us. So, you know, there's a whole lot more crazy coming going on. But I saw this and I'm like, that just blows my mind. Like, what's the odds of something? Like, <laughs> like what's the odds? Nobody knows where you are. Nobody knows, nobody knows where you are. Like you're, you're, you're having this life experience that's just, you know, just beyond crazy and nobody even knows you're experiencing this. No. And then, so you're in, you know, this is part two of the book, so I'm not going to give too much away, but. Well, technically, I, not, uh, what you just described, that's all still, that's all within 14 days. That's chapter seven. Oh, okay. 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 Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, and on the seven, on the seven day chapter seven, that's when I'm able to make contact with the outside world. Seven days in, I've been sitting here for seven days. Now I'm finally able to make contact with people. <laughs> so, yeah. and it wasn't like they like, oh y'all get this y'all time to just call it. No, nah, we were, had an objective. It was meeting with the immigration dude. So he just want to know who can we find somebody to when it's time for us to be released. Who can he contact to uh, pay for our plane ticket back home? So that's pretty much, they got all the foreigners in the jail, brothers. It's like 27 of us down there. And I'm talking about, we got Europeans, Africans, Americans, all El Salvadorians. Like it's a bunch, it's a mixture of folks down there. Um, so that's all they, you know what I'm saying? They just got all those, they gave us all, of, all those that had phones, you know what I'm saying? Hey, here go y'all, y'all go get y'all phones, find somebody to buy y'all plane ticket. So of course, this would be my first time to make contact with anybody. I'm taking full advantage of it. And it's like I said, it's 27 of us. It's only one immigration dude. So he's going down the line. I have plenty of time. Yeah. I'm taking advantage of this moment. And I'm contacting, you know what I'm saying? I'm Because as soon as I turn my phone on, I'm talking about my thing about to explode. You know what I'm saying? With messages and calls and voicemail. So I'm just responding, responding, responding. That was the first time I was able to make contact with the outside world. And um uh, People are like, what? What do you mean? What? Because they're probably worried. You probably got a bunch of texts saying, where are you? No clue. I just went MIA. And like the event I was going to, that paint the fan, I was supposed to meet friends there. So the fact that I didn't show up, they called me. I'm not answering. So folks thought the worst of worst. Like the people were thinking the worst of the worst. Like folks had no clue. And it had been seven days on top of that. Oh man, folks is like, they don't know what to think. So in wow. fact, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you for work? Like oh, that's, what I'm already, I already I knew and that's that's a great point. You just brought up a great point. Um what is it? Chapter two. Yeah, so chapter one is on the Thursday, right? Chapter two is a Friday. And We had that Friday off because it was a holiday. So it wasn't no work Friday. But Saturday and Sunday are our busiest days. Mm. So I, I'm like, okay, when I don't show up for work on Saturday, that is going to, that's going to cause chaos. Just because, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to show up for my first class. First class started at 8 o'clock. And I ain't going to be there. Yeah. So they're going to have to find somebody to fit this class in real quick. And then this chat, where the hell is he? Then to come find out, you know what I'm saying? One of, my, one of my co-workers at the same school, I was going to meet her at the fan, at the fan painting event. So she already know that I've been missing. Now she's going to have to tell the boss, like, hey, 
I don't know where he at. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, that's going to be the push to like, that's going to start the search for me. I already knew it was going to start, but they still, from behind closed doors, I have no clue what was going on, of course. <laughs> but wow, you know, so I already knew that's going to be, and I had a girlfriend at the time. So I'm like, she going to be, con- she going to call me eventually too. And I ain't going to answer. So I'm like, these two sources right here is going to be the, that's going to be the, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be the shift I need to, okay. What, what's going on? Because he, you know, what I'm saying I never knew that. So I was like, I just, it's a waiting game at this point. I gotta wow. definitely sit through the weekend, sat through the weekend, and still I'm still in here. I still don't know what's going on. Like I said, it was a whole week later that I was able to make contact with people. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> no, but did you, think, did you think in your head I'm gonna write this book? Or- oh no, no, no. Oh. I was, I, I was just like, once I, um, once I was released and. After I got released, I got deported from the country immediately. <laughs> yeah. So once I'm back in America, I'm just like, I know I want to do something with the story because I went through this. I went through this shit. And me, I'm a person like when I start something, I finish it. I was like, I'm going to go to China. I'm going to do my whole contract year and then I'm going to leave. Well, that shit ain't happened. It was, now, it was outside of my control. Well, it was, I, my, my decision making played a choice in it, of course. But I have to. <laughs> And out, I wasn't able to fulfill my goal, which was to do a year. So I got the short end of the stick, lost everything. But I'm like, I need to do something with the story. I ain't just go through all that. I ain't take all them L's just for, just, you know what I'm saying, just to sit on my, you know what I'm saying, take it to the chin and just suppress it and act like, ain't hell no, nah, y'all got me fucked up. I'm from Atlanta, so I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to mess this somehow. What am I going to do? I have no clue. I don't know. I don't know. But I know I'm going to do something with it. And then I'm I'm chilling with one of my tribal members. Uh, we powwowing, and he was just like, "Hey, bro!" And he was he's he was a published author before we graduated high school in 2014. Like he was already published. That's you know what I'm saying. So he was like, "Hey, bro, you should write about that shit." I was like, "Hmm, hmm. that's a good ass idea. I could I, like, I could write about it. I just, how do I go about doing so? I have no clue. But I'm like, that's a good idea. I know for a fact a book will be hard. Um, so he, he went in my notes. And he gave me like a, a five layer outline, just very brief. Um, and I just started, I just went on and I started filling it in, filling it in. And as I'm filling it in, I'm like, damn, this shit getting kind of lengthy. Hold up, let me take it. So I took it from my notes and opened a, a Google Doc with it. Now I'm on the computer with it. And I'm just writing, 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 writing. writing. And it, uh, I started writing it in July. So I got home from China in April 2019. I started writing it in July 2019. Um, I finished writing it in November 2019. <laughs> it took me four months to write it um and that was with me bullshitting uh then going through the editing phase and um setting it up and getting the cover done you know what I'm saying? all that all that, that that process um all in all it took about eight months so i got locked up on april 4th 2019 in china i released part one which is the free version uh, on Amazon on April 4th, 2020, the full, you know what I'm saying, the anniversary date of the day. Wow, you know what I'm saying? that's Everything awesome. Comes. And while I was still on, I was still on pre, like, it ain't even the fourth yet. It, like, I'm still on pre-sale. I was ranked number one in three different jobs. Man, what? That's <laughs> awesome. It well, came full well we gotta be, we gotta get the book. Hold up, do you have the book again? Hold up the book here so people can see it. It's over here in the cut too, but. 14 days in Beijing. Chancellor K. Jackson. And All as right. you can see, I recreated the mugshot. You tell the jacket how it says yellow and blue. That's just, I had to recreate that jacket and everything. And it That's didn't, awesome. Just to bring everything to life. Like y'all really finna, yeah, y'all gonna walk. And it's, it's, it's written in first person. So you're reading it as I went through it. Like it's, you're going through it. Like you're gonna feel every emotion, you're gonna, everything. So <laughs> it's very suspenseful, it's mysterious. Uh, it's humorous because my person uh, you've been laughing this whole time we've been talking but that's just my spirit you know what I'm saying? despite and i'm a sagittarius despite how serious the situation may be we're gonna find something to laugh you know what i'm saying we gotta yeah. laugh to keep crying for sure you know what i'm saying so we're gonna we're gonna find something to laugh at but um it's humorous um uh adventurous everything so yeah we're gonna we're gonna leave that to the to the listeners here on this is your city go out and get the book you won't regret it and not at all. And then, you know what? Give some feedback. I mean, you can be found on Facebook. You can be found on many different platforms. 
give them some feedback, give them some, some props on the book. I mean, we all need to feel like, you know, we're, we're doing well with what we love to do. So give them some feedback, tell them, read the book, tell them you read it and give them some feedback. Definitely. Helps us grow. Uh, for show, for show. <laughs> yeah. Need the reviews. Thank you so much, Chancellor. And I, we will talk again. You're going to have another book out. So <laughs> we'll get the book, get the book, get the book. All right. Thank you for having me on. For show, for show. Thank you. And for my listeners, thank you so much for tuning in again. I appreciate you wholeheartedly. And as I always say, make sure you share, subscribe, tweet, download. I don't know what you got to do, but you tell everybody that they should be listening to This Is Your City. Stay safe and stay blessed. Balance and blessings. Balance and blessings. Ciao. Thank you.